I'm Glennie D. Thanks so much for joining in this week. Welcome to 5 for Design. Where you learn design skills for STEM in five minutes a day. And I can't believe that we're up to week, week six. six already. Yeah, so this is really awesome. I'm excited about week six. Do you want to tell everyone why? Week six, we move from 2D shapes to 3D objects, mm. which is great. That's my background as a product designer. So I'm really excited. Yeah. So what we're going to be doing is understanding the optical illusion of creating a 3D object on a flat piece of paper. So it really looks like it pops. If you've ever seen this kind of cool artwork before, you'll understand what I mean. It has depths. It almost appears like stairs you could walk down or an apple you could pick up. And we're going to show you the tricks of how to do that. What most people don't understand, Glenny D, and what Glenny D does understand, is that there's only how many objects to be able to create anything you want. In the whole universe? Uh, yeah. Five. What? That's all. I know, it's a shock, right? But you only have to master five core 3D objects to design anything in this world or out of this world. I can't wait. Let's get started. Okay, all right, let's go. Monday's lesson's up next. It's week six exercises. We're moving into 3D drawings. Can I suggest this week that you print off three lessons and that would be Tuesday, Wednesdays and Thursdays. Monday, learning about oblique and isometric. Tuesday, we're warming up with those isometric lines. Wednesday, we're learning to draw a book. And even though it looks like a book, it's really the first step in drawing a cube. Imagine some pages there. And Thursday, the last step is to complete those far edges and we have a cube. Friday fun challenge is creating a massive tower and then placing some characters on top. You can draw them or you can use the ones, the cutouts that I'll supply you. Notice how this box has its end almost straight onto us or what's called oblique and then one side only slopes away. On this box, the corner is closest to us and both sides are sloping away. And that's what makes this box an isometric box. Can you tell what the third box is going to be? One of the ends is straight onto us and that's the clue that this is, or it starts with O, it's called oblique. This next one has a corner towards us, so it will be isometric. What about the next one? Good! One of the ends is straight onto us, or it has a flat line, makes it oblique. And the treasure chest full of gold is, of course, if you said isometric, yay, you're right. Have a go at the others on the page. Can you identify the oblique and the isometric drawings? In a book or on some scrap paper, have a go at drawing your own oblique and isometric sketch. We'll compare your isometric sketch to the end of the week and see how you've improved. Thanks everyone, you're awesome. I'll catch you next lesson. I'm Glennie D, bye for now. Did you know that Lego instructions are drawn in almost perfect isometric view? That's right, let's have a closer look. For example, here we see the two isometric axes, which actually, if you compared it to a flat line, are 30 degrees on each side. That's what isometric means. The same, the sides sloped up on the same angle. And the same for the crate on the back of this truck. Let's have a look at the outlines using tracing paper. Our exercise is not to draw trucks today. I'm just showing you an example of how commonly isometric drawings are used. These wheels are drawn using ellipses. Remember we used ellipses to draw cylinders? Here I'm using the isometric lines as the center lines on which to draw my ellipses. Next I join the two ellipses together to form a cylinder, which you guys can see here as wheels. 
Here are some basic 3D objects that I've traced off. If I wanted to add a chassis or the frame of the truck or the bumper, notice that most of these lines are isometric lines. So it's really crucial that we practice drawing these lines on the isometric angles. Let's get started. Using this sheet, we'll have lots and lots of practice at drawing isometric or 30 degree angle lines. No sheet? No problem. If you're using scrap paper, then grab the fantastic Splat 3D drawing tool to begin your isometric lines for you. Quick check, keep this part of your hand rubbing along the paper as you draw each line. The idea will be to stop at that line and we're going to draw to the right and then to the left. So let's begin by tracing over and over the lines. So stay at the top one and keep tracing until your muscles start to remember that movement. Then we'll slowly work down the page one line at a time and try to stop at that outside border. Hey, even if your lines aren't straight, this is great training. Just keep with it. You're doing exactly what you need to do. Well done. As I move down the page, it becomes a little more difficult. You may find drawing out to the left hand side extra difficult. I'm getting a few wobbles there, but remember, if they're straight or wobbly, love your lines. Now we draw some vertical lines. You may well find this is a bit easier. However, try not to be distracted by those isometric angled lines behind. When you've drawn four, five, six verticals, find a new spot and try again. If you want some extra hard training, try going backwards and forwards in between the lines. Super difficult. Hard work today, everybody. Thanks for joining in. I'm Glennie D. See you tomorrow. Hi, today we're using our isometric lines to draw a shape that looks rather like a book. It's really a cube that's almost completed. If I look at those two lines, they're parallel. If I draw a third parallel line and one in that direction where they cross over shows me how to draw in the two far edges. So today is all about that book shape. A quick note to the students who are drawing on plain paper. Use the splat drawing tool to create that book shape, which can then train you to draw a cube. Starting with a bird's foot, I'm going to mark off two fingers in height and then firm in that line. I'm marking off the same distance on the right and on the left axis. And firm those in as well. Now we draw those lovely vertical lines. I'm going really lightly. I'm giving myself an aiming mark and then on those lines I'll also mark off my two finger height. Same height as that one. Two fingers on there. Boom. You can firm those ones in and we're almost at the book shape. Can you see what we need to do now? Let's connect that point to that point. Similar on the other side. And there's our book shape. Just for fun, let's turn it into a book. So the cover is facing you and away from you are the pages. Let's add some more little pages in there. Cool. You can use the point of the splat to draw your bird's foot. Let's start again on a new bird's foot. When you have three even amounts marked out, I'm using two fingers, then firm in those lines. And do you remember what we did next? We need to draw the vertical lines in. Use light lines until you mark off the height and then go ahead and firm them in. Finally, we're joining the tops of those lines together to achieve that book shape. We're almost there. Watch on this speed up. I'm drawing a cube starting from a bird's foot, which means I need to draw my light lines. I'm using three finger spaces. Firm those in and we have our book shapes. Tomorrow we'll be looking at how to add two more lines called the far edges, like in a crisscross, to complete the cube. Awesome work today. See you tomorrow. Hi, welcome to day four. We're looking at the book shape. 
Notice how these two lines are parallel. They don't get any closer or further apart. The far edge line there is also parallel. So we have one, two, three parallel lines. Notice the other side of the book also is parallel lines. And that far edge is our third one. Look carefully where these two lines cross over. That's our intersection. And that tells me where the far corner is. So that's where I stop my dark line. Awesome. Let's try and let's bring it all together down the bottom here. We're extending light guidelines on the bird's foot. Next, we mark off how wide we want our cube. A little wider there. That looks good. And we draw long lines up, longer than we need them at this stage. Let's mark off the height of the cube, and then on my isometric angle, I'd bring the lines out. Where they crisscross at the back, that's where I start drawing my far edges from. One that way, and one in the other direction. My intersection shows me where the cube finishes. Excellent! If yours looks anything like this, you are amazing. The cube is the hardest 3D object to draw by far. It's going to take some practice, but together we'll do it. Just for fun, I'm connecting my two cubes with some lines. Hmm, could be a kite, maybe a tower. Something looks a bit funny, it gets skinnier as it goes up. Let's use a scrap piece of paper and place two marks. Let's compare it to the bottom. Uh-huh, so the bottom is a little longer. That could be something to look out for the next time I draw a tower. Hey, that gives me an idea. Let's try to draw a really tall tower. So we're drawing a bird's foot to start off with, but we'll keep that centre one going all the way up. Mark off how high you want your box or tower. Mark off the same amount on the left and right, and then run those vertical lines up. Aren't we glad we practiced those vertical lines drawing from bottom to top? Whoop, that one's a bit off. I think maybe in the middle of those two might be right, Glenny D. There we go. Oh, missed it. Still looks fairly good. Now for the far two corners. Remember we draw a line out that isometric and that way. Where they cross, that's my tower. Great, now you can draw a skyscraper or a tall tower. And the final step is to firm in those lines. Congratulations to those students who are brave enough to draw these long lines without needing a ruler. The lines that I'm drawing here are the floors of the building. So I'm drawing them on the isometric angle. Well, let's stop for a little doorway at the bottom and maybe a cover over the doorway. And here's the floors or levels on the other side of the building. Notice they're on the isometric angle. Hey, tomorrow's challenge day, and you'll get some more practice at drawing those lovely tall towers. Bye for now. The music. Hi, I'm Glenny D, and this is the Friday Fun Challenge. Thanks for joining me, it's been an amazing week. Your challenge today is to make a much larger tower. I'm using yesterday's drawing just to demonstrate, but I want you guys to draw um, as big as your piece of paper. So cover a whole A4 page. You can do cracks with flames coming out. You can draw your own creatures battling on the roof of the tower, or you could ask your teacher to print out and then cut out and paste on the creatures that I've given you. Here we see Godzilla and King Kong is about to arrive or hang on bursting through the side of this building is the python with the gigantic fangs. You can come up with your own story and creatures. Love to see it. Have lots of fun doing this challenge activity and I will see you next week with some more amazing drawing activities. Keep drawing. I'm Glenny D.